Today we have Brian Warkey, and basically this is a very good friend of mine, y'all. Like, when I first came to Faith, he was leading a Bible study called Ground Zero, but basically he was leading that day, and that's what I got, you know, not inspired, but I was really, like, seeking Christ at that time in my life. When I went up there to give life to Christ, he was the one that prayed for me, and it was great, y'all. So ever since then, he's um, kind of mentored me, been a friend of mine, been a brother of mine, so I'm just glad to have him on the show for this segment. Um, yeah, so today we just wanted to kind of talk about what it looks like to biblically, you know, walk this Christian life out. I know we talk about how to be a Christian, how do you get saved, how, how, what is the fruit of your salvation, what does that even look like? So today we're going to discuss all these things and also talk about a few Christian struggles that, you know, happens when you kind of transition from um, the world to being saved or walking the life that Christ has called you to walk in, losing friends, um, you know, having to cut off whatever you're doing in that moment, whether it be where you used to go, what you used to do, the habits that you used to be so eager to kind of indulge in. So we're just going to talk about all that right now. So I'm super excited and I hope you guys are too. Woo! Um, <laughs> I do want to say that Crystal is amazing. Uh, oh my boy. All that came off the top of the head. Nothing is written down. Oh. No practice. No yeah, uh, practice. run through. <laughs> that was actually pretty amazing. Um, but Thanks. yeah. So Thanks. we're talking about just the Christian life and. Yes, like what does it biblically, practically look like for someone to walk this Christian life out? Yeah. Um, shoot, number one, I would say is definitely a lot of prayer. Yeah. Um, you know, being young, we have so many opportunities for the flesh. Mm -hmm. uh, we have so many desires, so many things that are uh, just kind of coming our way. Yeah. Um, that it's just not in the path that God wants for us. No, and, seriously. Um, I just don't know any other way to kind of generate that spiritual strength mm -hmm. to persevere in your 20s or in your late teens, your early 30s, besides just being in that constant place of prayer. I agree. Um, I've seen myself, my most weakest, my most vulnerable, failing and falling the most when I've just disconnected myself from mm -hmm. God. So this is unpopular if you look at any studies any statistics it shows that millennials pray least wow. uh, than any uh previous generation before us um so I, we really do need to return back to that place and just relying uh on god yeah i think like also um it's almost like prayer is an exercise like it exercises your faith so it's like yeah you may not feel like god is listening but i mean the more you pray and the more you begin to have these revelations that while wow, he's answering your prayers and he's hearing you and you're physically seeing tangible evidence in your life that man god is so real this helps you know um this really helps and i mean even in matthews it talks about praying with faith and with that faith your prayers be your prayer is being answered so it's like it's really important like that's a crazy fact like that our yeah. generation is <laughs> really scary i'm actually really worried about us because we need to start praying like i know it sounds cliche y'all but pray 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 like it's real you know it's real it's not legalistic pray pray fam talk to god talk to him talk to him now i also want to just talk about reading the bible yeah um one thing about reading the scriptures it transforms you from the inside yeah um, i agree you can kind of be in an environment where people are living godly or whatever and start uh, morally conforming just to kind of your surroundings mm -hmm. uh, but you want to take your Christianity to the next level yeah. it's not just going to church or being Christian community mm -hmm. but also being in the words yourself yeah. uh, or studying the scriptures right now a lot of us are going through I don't know if you're joining us going through I don't know I think it's it's going through the whole book actually going through the whole Genesis yeah, exactly. to Revelation this gotcha. year and you just begin to see how the word like when you allow it to get in you mm -hmm. uh, how it begins to transform you it just yeah. uh once again also gives you that spiritual vitality uh to live this christian life in a very 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 perverse world yeah uh so please um get in the word um get into your bible read the gospels get into those scriptures guys um yeah. that is imperative to your christian life yeah so for a christian that's kind of starting off this walk what's book would you say would be best for them to kind of dive into and seek you know revelation and really influence from yeah i would definitely say the book of mark um yeah. if you're a new believer or you're just getting into reading the bible i would encourage you to start in the book of mark it's short it's 16 chapters mm -hmm. it's extremely fast paced mm -hmm. uh the parts of the other gospels that um, um make it kind of boring like the genealogy mm -hmm. and the reference to old testament uh, prophecies yeah. are cut out of the book of mark okay. it's just miracles miracles fast pace yeah. um and you just it's just a clean easy read uh, for those who are just now getting into bible reading 
training and from there you can take it to the next level yeah maybe read galatians maybe mm -hmm. go back to the gospel of that go and get into matthew or john is a good place yeah uh, but i would definitely encourage you know the book of mark would be a good place to get started yeah that's really good i think also yes you know your coming to faith is a personal is a personal thing but i think that when you're studying the scripture you can just as well find a community and get plugged in and also kind of be led by someone that may be a little bit more spiritually mature so that you know you can make sure you're reading and you're, you're held you're held accountable you know like sometimes we'd be waking up like i don't want to read but like that can be a wake-up call like hey have you read today or you know um so what did you learn i think writing down this stuff is so important too because i've learned that personally for me when i read i just kind of read but when i'm reading and writing i know what i'm doing so i think that that's good a good tip if you're a new believer or you're kind of struggling with your faith or your christian walk and you really want to kind of like get that fire back i think that'd be good steps to kind of doing that you just briefly mentioned like having people around you having the community around you that is definitely imperative yeah like jesus christ or the gospel where we're, where we're book of Hebrews yeah. says, do not forsake the assembling of yourselves well, that's uh, cool. as much as you see the day drawing near. Mm -hmm. And uh, what we need to understand is that Christian community is not uh, optional. Uh, it's not something that, you know, if you want to do it, go to church, be a part of a church or not. Mm -hmm. You know, like God has called uh, his church to be a part of a church. Yeah. His church capital c church the universal church mm -hmm. the 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 entire body of redeemed believers past present and future globally yeah. uh need to be part of a church a autonomous local body yeah. of believers who are walking this life with you this is not a life uh meant to be walked mm -hmm. alone god has redeemed a people uh to worship to serve to love to confess to sing and to do all these things yeah. um together um it's it's i cannot emphasize enough you yeah know, like that piece of having community around you as you're living out your christian life i think that's so real too because like that's actually happened to me like i noticed that when i isolated myself from people or from the church or from christian community i end up kind of becoming really idle and kind of sliding backsliding in my walk whereby i may not pray as much i may be more influenced and be sinful um so you just have these temptations i mean i think they're more real when you're isolated because now the devil has you in a place where it's like you know i can easily catch a hold of them and they have no one there to and you know help them or to speak life into them or to encourage them or to pray with them so i agree i think community is really important um if you're kind of introverted i'm not introverted but i'm I don't know. I'm weird, so I don't have a large community, but I definitely have. Um, Wait, does, this, does this look like an introvert? I definitely have family, <laughs> like you know, Brian and my sister Chin, and you know, I definitely have a lot of family and friends, and um, you know, I think that I don't know. I think that just prayer, like you know, we, we discussed earlier, praying about community, praying about friends, God to send you friends, um, and just hoping that you know you will receive these friends and then you guys will do life together versus um shutting yourself from people and kind of like hiding and not wanting to connect with others because that's not going to help you either and no doubt no doubt you got to understand that um sin's natural environment that's conducive to is darkness yeah um if you're isolated even as you're praying preach, preach even as you're reading the bible uh, the environment that sin grows in will be darkness. The environment yeah. that is not conducive is light. Mm -hmm. uh, so when you're in community, you have someone that you're confessing your sins to like, um, hey bro, I'm dealing with pornography. Mm -hmm. Hey sis, I'm dealing with uh, alcoholism, fornication, etc., mm -hmm. etc. What you're doing is you're bringing that sin into the light, into an environment where its growth is going to be severely yeah. uh, stifled and eventually uh, wither up and die. So please, uh, find a group of body believers who are gonna love you, not judge you. People you can come to, cast your cares uh, uh, upon, and mm -hmm. can reflect and, and mirror the love of Christ uh, for you. Yeah. And you'll just see your your spiritual life and your Christian life just uh, continuing to grow step by step uh, by step. And we're not inviting to our church. It's not a club. <laughs> you know, we're gonna come, come to our church. church. We'll see you Sunday. Not at all. Not hello, at all, hello, man. hello. Just find a body of believers. Yeah. That that's that, real. That hold the scriptures uh, mm -hmm. as authority, um, that preach the gospel, yeah. uh, that aren't crooks, oh my God. Um, that isn't a charlatan, church, charlatan, charlatan. Uh, chicanery, all that stuff, stay away from 419. <laughs> 419 five stars. My singular. Stay away. Stay away from them. Because they'll eat your money and you'll be upset. And you'll mm -hmm. come complain. Then church hurt begins. Exactly. You don't want to go to church anymore. Exactly. Did you even go to church? Is, <laughs> is it even a church? <laughs> 
<laughs> no, but no, that, that's real. So we discussed, we discussed prayer, we discussed word. scripture, the word, and we discussed community. community. So these things are so fundamental for um, a starting off believer and what it practically looks like to walk this Christian life and to also get into things that are going to draw you closer to Christ. Whether you be a new believer, whether you be a struggling Christian, whether you be a mature Christian, there are things that you will continuously do as the sanctification process continues in our lives. Um, it never really ends until we're dead. So, you know, I think it's good to fall into that habit now of definitely staying plugged in, reading scripture, and continuously praying fervently. So basically for Christians who are kind of going from being in the world to a new life in Christ, what struggles should they look not look forward to, but what struggles should they be aware of um, during this transition? Like, you know, losing friends, what should they know beforehand? Yeah, so I think, I think everybody's struggle is gonna be different. Uh, I know the sin that I struggled with the most before I was a Christian was just being a people pleaser. Mm. So that was kind of the demon and it's still the demon that I wrestle with today. Uh, mm -hmm. Francis Chan will talk about how for a lot of us, if someone put a gun to our head and said, deny Jesus or I'll blow your brains out, that's like an easy decision. Like, yeah. of course I'm not going to deny Jesus. You know, easy death, I'm out of mm -hmm. here, straight to heaven. Um, but if someone was to say, deny Jesus or we're going to ostracize you from all of your mm -hmm. friends, all of your family, everyone that you've known growing up, your neighbor that would be a more difficult decision yeah. because we love to be loved mm -hmm. we love the attention we love to be known mm -hmm. we love acceptance, uh, acceptance. Mm -hmm. and for me the hardest transition um, the hardest part of my transition was just not being accepted anymore. Yeah. not being invited to, not being invited to certain parties mm -hmm. uh, being looked at differently being gossiped about behind mm -hmm. my back uh, just knowing that people didn't want to connect with me the way they used yeah. to connect with me because I don't want to do things that they want to do and for me that was very very and it still is challenging today yeah. seeing yeah. by your old friends linking up hanging out yeah. doing all those things and you're just no longer invited because mm -hmm. you don't uh, laugh the same jokes that they laugh at. Yeah. You don't participate in the same things they participate in. Yeah. That uh, is, has, was the most challenging part of my transition. But like mm -hmm. I said earlier, for everybody, it's going to be different. different. Uh, yeah. For everybody, depending on your personal struggle, your mm -hmm. personal sin, it's cause some people don't even care about their friends. Even in the world, they don't care about their friends. So whatever, <laughs> you, know, yeah. you know, for, for others, it's, it's more challenging. So, yeah. but no matter what your struggle is, just know that God is with you mm -hmm. and he's supernaturally empowering you to get through yeah. whatever it is that you're going through. So be strong in the Lord and understand that he has already overcome the world. Yeah, that's so real. Cause I think that there's even many nights that I cried when I first got saved and you know, truly gave my life to Christ. I literally cried. No. <laughs> like, I cried real tears. Real tears, like in at, my bed, you were crying. I was at CC's Pizza oh, by, yourself. by myself. <laughs> Buffet Ain't no friends. Ain't no friends. No friends. Dang. And was crying. Yeah. Eating that nasty CC's pizza. Oh, no. no CC's is not nasty. <laughs> CC's is great. That spinach pizza was popping. Are you a child? <laughs> it was popping. No, but that's real. It's just, and that's when I started journaling a lot. I, I still have my journal up until now. Same with me. I started journaling. I started I started writing love letters to Jesus, y'all. Like I was low key lame. Like I would write letters to him. I would write prayers. Like I just would write because I didn't know what else to do with myself. That's when I kind of got inspired to start my channel. Really, like what can I do apart from being so idle? I don't really have as many friends, or not that I have as many, have as many friends anymore, but I don't have as many friends that I can truly hang out with and, you know, like you said, laugh at their jokes and really just partake in the community and fellowship of friendship. You know, I couldn't really do that because it was like, uh, ooh, ooh, what's going on? You know, I can't laugh at that. I can't partake in that. So why am I here? So I think that, you know, he, like he said, um, God is truly sovereign in all of it. I never knew that I'd have, I, I know or have such amazing friends um, that would turn into low-key family. So it's like, I'm thankful for the, the stretching process. I'm thankful for the fire because they're really, really refined. Okay, everyone's going to have a varying um, struggle that's going to cause them to feel some sort of pain, some sort of maybe doubt, some sort of questioning whether it was the right thing to do, but I kid you not, it is. And 
if you can just push forward and trust God that he is suffering and he will bring the right people into your life and he will be your comforter in these times, um, you're on the right path already. Um, it, no one ever said it was going to be easy, but it's definitely, definitely worth it. It's definitely worth it to truly put your all in Christ and trust that where you are now, whether it be in the, in the storm or the valley, whatever it is, he is going to provide. He's going to show himself faithful over and over again so um yeah definitely just holding on to that and um that being definitely one of the christian struggles that occurs when you are transitioning from in the world to fully sold out for jesus christ um yeah i'm so thankful for brian for coming on the show um i hope you guys learned a lot because i i did i think that that fact you pulled out earlier is still like i'm still it's still simmering on my brain Prayerless generation, like I didn't, I didn't realize like how, you know, how how much of an impact it have. But look around, like look yeah. around, like we're going through a lot right now, and it's like I don't want to blame us, but it's you know, you know, it's it's apparent that we're not doing enough as active Christians to spiritually, you know, go into war with this stuff. You know, like we're not fighting against flesh. It's all spiritual warfare. I just think that I learned a lot. I hope you guys learned a lot too. Um, if you guys have any comments or questions for Bryant um, that you'd like to ask, you can leave them below and we'll definitely either get back to you or we'll do another video together. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, comment, and like this video and I will see you guys next time on Crystal's Corner. Thank you guys. God bless. Bye.